Hello everyone and welcome to John's Workshop. Today I'd like to show you my latest project. It is a regenerative shortwave radio using three 6SJ7 pentode tubes. It also uses the old style four prong plug-in coils. My front panel is a very nice piece of aluminum, highly polished, and it holds the following controls. Volume, regeneration, main tuning, and band spread. And notice that the main tuning and the band spread are both vernier driven, which is very important because this little radio turned out to be much more sensitive and selective than I anticipated, and so fine tuning is really essential. I built this little radio using what we call the breadboard technique. Breadboard is an old term going back to the early days of radio when uh, radio components were actually mounted to a kitchen breadboard or another similar piece of wood. In my case, the breadboard is a nice piece of half-inch plywood that has been sanded and varnished on both sides. I actually prefer working this way because, number one, aluminum chassis are expensive, and number two, if you have to move a part later on, like a tube socket, you're left with an unsightly hole which tells everybody either you didn't know what you were doing or you didn't plan ahead. Let's take a look at the breadboard. Here's the back of my little shortwave radio. It uses an external power supply, which I'll show you in a minute. Across the back, I have a row of binding posts to connect the receiver to the power supply. My front panel is very strong and very stable. In fact, it's reinforced with two steel angle brackets here and here. Regenerative radios have to be built like battleships. Everything has to be very sound. Nothing can wiggle, nothing can flex. In fact, my two tuning capacitors are connected directly to the front panel. I'm using the old style four prong plug-in coil. And of course, I've done the windings myself. Here we have our three 6SJ7 tubes. The first one is an untuned RF amplifier. The second one is a grid leak detector furnishing feedback to my tickler coil. And the third one is a single stage audio amplifier which drives my high impedance headphones. Here we have a very large hefty audio frequency choke. In fact, it's 350 Henry's. And what it does is squeeze all the audio signal out of the plate circuit of the detector tube. Here's a unique little item. I've never seen this in any circuit diagrams. I think I invented it myself. This is a double pole, double throw switch, which reverses polarity to the tickler coil. If I wind a coil incorrectly, or use somebody else's coil, and I can't get oscillation, all I do is flip the switch, reversing polarity to the tickler coil, and oscillation will work perfectly. I think it's a very clever little innovation. And here is my little standalone power supply. Of course, it is fuse protected. On the front panel, I have a pilot light, on-off switch, and binding posts to provide the different voltages. This little power supply will give me 150 volts DC regulated for my receiver's detector circuit and 300 volts DC for other tube circuits, along with 6.3 volts AC for the tube filaments or tube heaters. My rectifier tube is the 6X4, and the voltage regulator is the OA2. Again, breadboard technique has been used. And just before my antenna and ground are connected to my little receiver, they both pass through this BC wave trap. I have a very loud, offending AM broadcast station near me that plays havoc with my shortwave listening. So I built this little trap, and I'm easily able to tune out the offending station. And best of all, I didn't have to go out and buy an expensive aluminum enclosure. I just went down to my local Home Depot electrical department and bought a steel outlet box which provides perfect shielding.
total cost about three dollars and here is the whole setup connected and ready for action Well, that's it folks, my three tube regenerative shortwave radio. It turned out to be more sensitive and more selective than I ever hoped for. It was a real nice little project and it was very carefully built. I paid a lot of attention to where the parts were laid out. All the wiring is as short as possible and of course all the solder joints are bright shiny silver. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to Radio Australia. And thank you for listening, mates.